Holy God, spare the earth, but put a fire in our bones so that our words are alive with hope, our hearts aflame with love, our deeds ablaze with compassion. Holy God, spare us the winds of destruction, but let loose your spirit that carries us along the paths of justice. Holy God, be fire in our bones, wind at our back, a dove of peace. Be a spirit of love, a song reborn, a life renewed. Good morning. Welcome home. Yay. How good it is together in the same room, even if we are still distanced and masked. God is here in the flames of faith shared. Friends, we are living in such hard and difficult times. A pandemic has quarantined us and put distance between us and seems to have no clear ending in sight. So many lives have been lost to this virus. So many families impacted and lives changed forever. And not only has our health been threatened, but our sense of outrage, confusion, fear, sorrow, and disbelief has exploded by the brutal and senseless death of George Floyd. And dear friends, we can no longer deny that there is another plague moving among us, and it is called racism. And we must, we must find a cure. We must receive the Holy Spirit of God that not only allows but demands us to reach out to all human life with compassion, love, and respect, inclusion, and acceptance. God help us. On this Pentecost Sunday, this birthday of the church, let it be a new day of love, hope, and peace. Well, friends, we are doing things a little differently this morning and will for the next several Sundays until we know it is safe to return to a more normal way of uh, doing things. We will not be having our hug and howdy time of greeting each other. We will offer a more restrained wave and a wink moment. We will not be passing offering trays um, because germs might be spread that way. So you can place your offering in the basket that's just outside or in the narthex uh, by the doors as you go outside. Place your offering there. It will be picked up by our trustees and will be under their good care. And at the close of our service, rather than greeting you at the um, sanctuary doors, I'm going to go all the way outside and have you, uh, and I will greet you there. Um, no handshakes, no hugs, I'm sorry to say, but we can wave, we can thumbs up, elbow, uh, bop, or booty bump, whatever. Uh, <laughs> And we thought to avoid close contact uh, with, with germs, that we would um, have the, the back rows leave first. And those of you in the front, or front pews, if you would just stay a little longer, and uh, then you can go out. And as you greet each other, go all the way outside and greet each other and distance yourselves appropriately um, and enjoy each other's company. If you uh, picked up a Bible or a hymnal this morning, please just leave them with you, leave them here in the pews, and uh, we will take care of sanitizing them for next week. Um, but just leave those here. If you uh, got a, a bulletin, uh, please take that home or drop it in the uh, recycling bin. Um, and for your protection this morning, other parts of the church have been closed off. Uh, so we are just staying here in the sanctuary. There won't be any coffee or formal fellowship time. Uh, there won't be child care offered until it is deemed safe. Sunday school classes are encouraged to continue to meet online and other activities as well, unless small groups have agreed together to meet and practice um, social distancing. Thanks to our staff, who served as ushers and greeters today and helped get the sanctuary prepared for your arrival. Our custodian, Kyle, is here this morning, uh, and he will be here after worship, and he will sanitize doors, and uh, yes. We're... 
We are very grateful to Kyle for all that he does. And thanks to all of you for being so understanding and recognizing that all the precautions being taken are for your welfare. Uh, may we be open to the movement of the Holy Spirit among us as we adapt, grow, and serve faithfully together. In our bulletin this morning, there is a list of our graduates and graduates of our family members, and we lift them up in joy and offer our heartfelt love and congratulations to them. On Wednesday of this week, we are having a vir the first ever that I know of, first virtual bread and broth cafe. Um, those of you that have participated in recent months should have been notified that this was happening. Uh, some volunteers will be bringing you dinner uh, during the hours of 4 and 6. And then at 6 o'clock, we will join together by Zoom and just kind of check in with each other and see how people are doing. Many thanks to uh, Cindy Liggett, Lynette Biviano, and Lynn Harshman, who came up with the idea and have orchestrated everything and planned this. It should be a great night. Tonight at 8 o'clock, there is a march beginning at the courthouse and walking to the police station to bring our community together in peace and hope. If you are able, um, please join this important event in our community. May we be fed this day, healed and empowered by the Holy Spirit as we worship together. Take a moment, wave and wink to those around you and whisper your welcome. question was just asked if we are going to stand or remain seated for the, the singing of the hymns. We're going to stand up so when we do that. We are thankful that you are here and um, Gary is going to prepare us with a gift of music. Good morning. Would you join me in our call to worship on this Pentecost Sunday? Powerful spirit, strong wind. Stirring us to life, breathing hope into despair. Warming spirit, dancing flame. Kindling joy and us to courage. Comforting spirit. 
gentle breeze. Wise spirit, blazing fire, Holy Spirit, soaring dove, and would you now stand if you are able, if you're at home watching, stand up and join us. We're going to sing verse 1 of Heaven Came Down, number 510 in your hymnal. May we join together in prayer. Almighty God, who comes to us this day as a mighty wind breathing into our souls new life, new hope, new passion, new direction, we open ourselves to your Holy Spirit. As we receive that Spirit, may it open our hearts to the atrocities of racism and hatred that are too prevalent in this day, and let us See that the only way we can survive and thrive is to accept each other, all people, as your beloved creation. As we receive that spirit, may it open our spirits to seeing life in a new way. Oh God, this pandemic has been frightening because it reminds us of the fragility of human life. But your Holy Spirit reminds us of the immortality of the human soul. Let us feed the soul this day, nurture the soul, exercise the soul as we serve with joy, acceptance, peace, and determination, the gentle, all-inclusive love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As our children come forward for um, our children's message this morning, may we join in singing the first verse of They'll Know We Are Christians By Our Love. Good morning. It is so good to see you. You are a breath of fresh air for me. I hope that you have been doing well at home, and it's good to have you back in this home. Um, 
Anybody know what today is? It's a special day. Pentecost. You know what Pentecost is? Yeah, Rainy. It's the church's birthday. And you can't have birthday without singing happy birthday, can you? So if you'll join me, and if you'll join me, we're going to sing happy birthday to the church this morning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Well done. Sounded good. Well, on that very first Pentecost Sunday, there were people that were gathered from all over the area. And they, they looked different from each other. They spoke different languages. They were different ages, different sizes, different ways of being. And they're all in this one place. And anybody know what happens as they're all together in this one place? The scripture says there's just this sound of a, a mighty wind rushing through them. And then, anybody know what happens? Flames of fire descend on the disciples. And I just kind of wondered what that might feel like. So we're going to feel what it felt like to have wings of fire descend on us this morning. So here comes the Holy Spirit. Descending on you. <laughs> and the spirit, this, uh, these tongues of fire that fell on the disciples, filled the, new, the disciples with a new kind of power in their lives and a new determination to go out and to tell the whole world about Jesus Christ and how he had made a difference in their lives. And we have that same responsibility today as part of our birthday celebration of the church. Um, we're going to leave the balloons up here for worship, but after worship, if you want one, you're welcome to come up and take them home And as a reminder of the Spirit among us. May we pray together. Loving God, we rejoice and give thanks for your Holy Spirit among us and the knowledge that it comes to us in so many different ways. Sometimes it descends to us like flames of fire on a, on a Pentecostal morning. Some days your Spirit comes to us in the whisper of a friend or the hug of a parent. or the joy of joining with others in song. Bless this gathering and let your spirit fill us all in new and glorious ways that we might serve your world and you. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much. Well, good morning. It's good to see so many faces out there. It was always kind of awkward and difficult to know 
where I was looking and where, which camera to look to, and so it's nice to see some faces again. If we will, go to God in prayer this morning. Loving and enduring God, we pray this morning a prayer of healing. We pray as we continue to go through this pandemic, we know that things are different and things are difficult for each of us. And we pray for healing that we may overcome this together. We pray for healing and the illness of racism that seems to be infecting each corner of our country as we stay up with anxiety and heartbreak and anger as we face the events that are occurring and the injustices that continue. We pray for healing in this moment that we may find a way to come together and be moved in the spirit, that we may be healed and restored and understand what it means to act to God's will and how we may live into that and to beloved community as we face so much in these, in these dark times. Amen. continue in prayer together as we pray the words Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The first sentence in today's scripture is Acts 2, verse 1, and it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And boy, do I wish that were true on this Pentecost Sunday. We are definitely not all together in one place. We are, of course, separated by the pandemic. Some of us are safely at home, participating in worship from a distance. Some of us will watch the service during the days to come, and some of us are physically present here in the sanctuary. If ever we needed Pentecost in our world, this is the time. In our country, we are fractured along political lines, cultural divisions, and our beliefs, even within Christianity. Yet, as I read this scripture again, I am filled with fresh hope. At least 15 different nationalities heard Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost. And Peter, remember, was a fisherman who had to assure the crowd that he was not drunk. The Spirit came to everyone, and the Spirit included all, not some, all. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Jews stood next to Gentiles, and men stood next to women. All of them felt and saw the movement of the Holy Spirit among them. One article I read recently said that Pentecost launched the large-scale spread of the gospel. And when I hear large-scale spread these days, I don't think of the movement of the Holy Spirit. I think of COVID. But I would much rather visualize the large-scale spread of the Holy Spirit, and I should, and we all should. So when we wonder today, can Democrats find common ground with Republicans? Can Christians find a way to build friendships with Muslims? Can racial discrimination and unspeakable, horrible crimes committed against people simply because of the color of their skin be eliminated? I think we have to know the answer. The Spirit speaks in different languages and different ways, but it's very much present today if we each are open to those. I would say the Spirit was present here at Federated just a few weeks ago when a parade of friends drove through this parking lot to let Pastor John know on his birthday how much he means to us. The Spirit is moving every day when I see friends reaching out to elderly and shut-in neighbors to care for them during this time. As Gary works from home and now takes unemployment calls um, and describes conversations he has with people who have waited weeks, maybe months, just to talk to somebody, I know the Spirit is moving as he patiently listens and finds a way for them to receive assistance. I follow a show called Some Good News on YouTube. It's hosted by John Krasinski, who some of you may know from the TV show, The Office. And it often brings me to tears every time I see stories that spotlight everyday people sharing their food, their supplies, caring for others, and celebrating the life we're all living right now. A recent episode gave some Boston healthcare workers who were also Boston Red Sox fans a special message of thanks from David Ortiz and team members, including free tickets whenever this thing is over and we can all get back to baseball. Another episode reunited the original cast of Hamilton via Zoom for a little girl whose dream trip to see the show was canceled due to the coronavirus. And another invited graduating seniors to a virtual prom where they could dress up and dance the night away. I can assure you, after just a moment or two of watching that show, you too will see the Spirit is moving in a mighty way in our country. So in and of themselves, what differences do these little tiny breezes of the Spirit make? Our world's needs are overwhelming, so what good are the works of a few individuals in a broken world? Only those whose heart is with Christ would imagine that the work of God is exemplified in people like you and me. But the Spirit blows where it will, and anyone overwhelmed by the Spirit of God is compelled to step outside boundaries, break down walls, and do whatever is required to be the love of God until that day when each and every one of us will be found, cared for, and saved. I read somewhere that the Holy Spirit is like the music, is like music for people who want to learn to dance. You can study and read about dance all you want, but you're never actually dancing until you feel and learn to move with the music. We are promised that the music of the Holy Spirit in us will enable us to live the God-powered life we have read and dreamed about. 
And as part of leading that life in the Spirit, God calls us to give of ourselves, of our hearts, and of our treasures to continue to support the important work of the church in our world. So don't forget to give online today or in the offering plates in the narthex if you're here in the sanctuary today. Let us pray. God of Pentecost, we know we have too often resisted the urging of the Spirit and turned away from those who are different. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as individuals and as our church, just as you did on that first Pentecost. Help us feel the wind of the Spirit leading us to live transformed lives as disciples of Christ, in whose name we dedicate our gifts and in whose name we pray. Amen. This week, as I was preparing for worship, I got an email from one of you that um, asked me the question, what are you going to do on Sunday? One of the rules is that if you're 65, you're supposed to stay at home. <laughs> and uh, my only response to that is, I don't know, you can't get rid of me that easily. Also, one of our rules is that you wear a mask, and I'm not wearing a mask, although I have it with me and will later in our service. But our scripture lesson today is a familiar one. It's from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8 and 14 through 21. Hear the word of God. When the, dinner, the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May God bless the reading of this sacred word. It was a beautiful sight, a bit of a miracle I think. They were all together in one place, male and female, old, young, in between, people of color, folk from different economic backgrounds. A wide variety of educational learning was present. Some were rich, some were not. Some were dressed to the nines, ready to impress and dazzle others in faded jeans and worn t-shirts who had no other choice but seemed not to care. Young, smooth hands, wrapped tightly in rough, gnarled, older hands. Teens savoring those first moments of attraction, locked arm in arm in blooming love, joy abounding. There was movement in this miraculous gathering, all those present moving forward, moving together, moving in the same direction. Some were laughing with delight, some a bit fearful, some showing a bit of hesitation. Some were moving faster than others, some at nearly a snail's pace, 
One or two had met an obstacle and having fallen, they found hands offering to lift them up again. And everybody was moving at different speeds to be sure, but all moving in the same direction, guided by some mysterious voice giving them instruction, joy abounding. It was a beautiful sight. A bit of a miracle, I guess. It was almost a holy occasion. So what church had I been fortunate enough to wander into, you ask? In what cathedral do all people of all races, ages, economic backgrounds, educational experiences move forward together with joy, all with the same destination in mind? Well, alas, it it was not a church. But I really do love a good roller rink. (laughs) My, oh, my. Dear friends, we must ask, why not the church? It happened once before. They were all together in one place, a great crowd of people with different backgrounds, cultures, races, life experiences, all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a mighty wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each, and they ask, how is it that we hear in our own language? There are moments in each of us when we begin to hear a new language. It's new, yet yet echoes with familiarity. We know it through our deepest longings and our keenest desires, and it fills us with hope and life and peace lies hidden deep within us. It's always been there. But there comes that one day when we hear it in a new way as if for the very first time and on that day we hear in our native language. It describes, reveals, and it makes present the deeds of God's power in our lives. This is the miracle. This is the gift of Pentecost. It happens when we fall in love and find our love's voice not just communicating information, but speaking presence, union, oneness. It's that great day when all of creation speaks to us. The birds no longer just chirp. They sing a song that we know and recognize. The wind doesn't just blow through the trees, but it now whispers stories of our past and stories of our bright and glorious future. It happens when we discover our vocation and we, are, we know that we are living our, the life to which God has called us. And a voice assures us, saying, this is your place. It's moments of joy-filled creativity, and we wonder, where did that come from? How did I do this? It's a soft voice in the midst of sorrow that says, I am here. It won't be easy, but you will be okay. And somehow we are given the strength to get up the next day. It is the voice of compassion that enables us to care for each other regardless of color or country, nationality, or difference. It is a word of encouragement that points us to the way of truth a truth that causes us to turn around, a word, a peace that we embody as a reconciled people of God. How is it that we hear in our own native language? I can't begin to explain all the particulars here, but when the message is big enough, 
important enough, challenging enough, liberating enough, joyful enough, the message is heard and lives are changed and we hear it in our own native language and we understand because the word, the message is the language of God and we are naturally drawn to it. We need it, we long for it, we cry for it and it's saving power and we hear the message when we need it the most. And we live in a world of such desperate, desperate need where the message of God is so deeply needed. There's that bone-weary, exhausted, desperate soul crying out for all who feel the sting of oppression and prejudice, crying out, I can't breathe. Please help me. So ready to hear the message of God that comes to us as Jesus cries out to us, Oh, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The victim of prejudice hears in their own language and finds a moment of rest. There is that hungry child of poverty, desperate and hopeless, searching for the day's meal that may not come. Society saying, well, find your own bread. In their poverty, in their great need, tongues of fire rest on them. And they hear Jesus proclaiming to his disciples the need for a miracle. Jesus says to his disciples, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. And how do we respond? There is that person beaten down and broken by the harshness of the world. The man of color. The woman struggling with her sexual identity. The one disfigured. The one struggling for breath because of a hated virus. Or worse, from hatred and fear itself in need of a word to restore their battered and bruised spirits. And the prophet Isaiah speaks in the language of God and declares, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are precious to me and honored. And I love you. In their own language. They hear and believe and are restored. These and thousands of other incidents like them are the moments of Pentecost, moments when we know, we know that God is not just with us or around us, but is within us. And we are somehow different, more real, more alive, more whole. These, however, are often not the story of Pentecost, which we are most familiar with. Instead, we listen, we listen for a sound of a rushing wind to come from heaven and to fill our entire house. We look for divided tongues as a fire to appear and rest on us. We wait to speak in another language, sound tongue, and languages are how Luke describes this day of Pentecost. They are the images we most often associate with Pentecost, but they are not the story of Pentecost. We sometimes confuse the two, the images and the story. And it's easy to do because the images are so vivid, so powerful, so different from ordinary everyday life. With their power, however, comes danger. And the danger is that we look at these images but we fail to see through them, beyond them. We make the images literal, opaque, and closed rather than symbolic, transparent, and open. We allow the uh, images to define and identify rather than to point and invite. When that happens, the images lose their power and purpose. They can take us nowhere, and Pentecost becomes just a single event in history, unique, limited, seemingly unavailable to us. Sound tongues and languages are not the keepers of Pentecost. They are the pointers to the gift of Pentecost. And when we see through these images, we find that Pentecost is happening 
all the time, in all places and spaces, in all circumstances, and we hear in our own native language, we realize Pentecost is not a sound like a, a violent rushing wind. It's not divided tongues of fire. It's not speaking in other languages. The meaning is found in the hearing. Hearing is what, um, is what amazed and astonished the people on that day of Pentecost. They were not so much amazed and astonished at the sound of the wind, the flaming tongues, or even the foreign languages. They were amazed and astonished, asking, how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? And that means that Pentecost is so much more than sound tongues and languages. Those are just the images of Pentecost. And I'm not suggesting that they are not real and that because they are more real than we know. They are the gateway to our story at Pentecost, our own personal birthday of the Spirit. They empower us to open ourselves to an invisible world, to cross old boundaries, to be different, and to live a new life. They make us capable of God. Ultimately, that's what Pentecost is about, becoming capable of God. And that is not our doing. It is the work of the Holy Spirit among us. The Holy Spirit makes each of us capable of God. It is unique and personal, and it is holy to each of us. If you want to know how you are being made capable of God, then go to the places where you hear in your own language, and there you will hear stories of God's presence filling your life, and they will be stories of love and peace, hope and joy, stories of patience and gentleness, courage and justice, stories of mercy and forgiveness, reconciliation and inclusion, stories of wisdom, creativity, wonder, stories of healing and resurrection, stories of your Pentecost, your spirit being born into a new day. These stories can only be heard in our native language, for that is the language of God. And each one describes the deeds of God's power in their lives. They are the living stories of our being made capable of God. Oh, we are Pentecost people empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. The message, our message, is God's message, and it is so big, it is received by all in ways that we cannot always understand, but in our language. And we have to make sure that our language is big enough, that it is the language of inclusion and justice and unity and action and that it is the language of hope and joy and above all other things it is the language of love so that all can come together and find healing and strength and can be empowered to do the things that once were thought impossible and can move forward together in the same direction we are a pentecost people empowered by the holy spirit of god there was a man walking through a city, and he stopped to observe a construction worker who had before him this mammoth pile of red bricks. And he was going through each one carefully, measuring them, uh, sanding some of them, tossing some into the unusable pile. And he was selecting all the perfectly formed bricks in order to build a magnificent church on the site. And he took all these perfectly formed bricks, all the same size, the same color, the same weight, and he built, stacked this mighty, glorious fortress, breathtaking in its beauty. The observer was so impressed, and he thought, what a great church this was going to be. And that night, there was a ferocious windstorm that tore through the night with a terrible vengeance. And the next day, the man walked by the newly built church, fashioned with all those perfectly measured, perfectly identical bricks. And he was shocked when he drew near to see that the building had fallen during the night. The bricks broken and scattered, a great shambles, a mess, an eyesore. And with sadness, he walked on down the street where he came upon another carpenter building a church. 
and spewed all over the ground were stones of every color, size, shape, and weight imaginable. Some were heavy, others were light, some perfectly formed, others barely recognizable as stones. And he placed them all in this huge pile with no sense of order, and he started to build his church. And the men felt obligated to share the disaster of the other builders. Sir, you are wasting your time. Just yesterday, a man down the street built this beautiful church with perfect bricks, all of them the same. And last night, the power of the wind blew it down, utterly destroyed. And the builder assured him that this church would stand. And he went over to this large vessel of liquid and he began to stir it vigorously. It was gray in color and he generously poured it out and over in between on top of all the stones he placed in his church. It was a most interesting looking church with all these different sizes and shapes, colors and forms. 85 years later, it would still be standing 120 years later, it was still standing. And what kept it together with all these oddly sized and shaped stones standing so strong, well, it was that liquid poured into every crevice, poured out over every stone, regardless of shape or color or size. Oh, it looked like cement, but that's not what he called it. What did he call it? What do you call that stuff? You can call it Jesus Christ. You can call it the Word of God. You can call it the Holy Spirit. You can call it the language of God. All we know is that without it being poured out and over and in between and inside every one of us, we cannot be the church of hope for the suffering. We cannot be the church with a future that is bright and promising. We cannot be the church of Jesus Christ so desperately needed in a fragile, fragmented, frightened world. Listen. Listen carefully. Do you hear it? There in the distance? The sound of a mighty rushing wind to pour out over and into us all the language of God. Oh, friends, we are Pentecost people. Let us move forward together, living the language of God's love that we all understand in our own way. It's just so big, this sacred task that we have been given. Listen, listen carefully for the language of God to become your native language of acceptance, Justice, inclusion, hope, peace, love. Oh, listen and become all God wants and needs us to be. The church united and serving together. The church living and loving together as Christ loves and serves us all together. We can speak, work, and live the language of God. We are capable of God. Be open to the coming of the Holy Spirit this day, hear in your own language the words of God and respond. Respond by how you live out your life. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so grateful for this day of Pentecost this liberating day that sets our souls free. Oh God, help us to be a people of vision and passion and compassion, a people of justice, a people who care deeply about every human life that you have created in your image. And let us listen for your voice so that your language becomes our native language. 
Make us capable of you, O God. In the name of the saving Christ, we pray. Amen. If there are those that here this morning that have felt the Spirit of God moving in your heart or mind, or if there are those of you at home, we invite you to make a commitment to this Spirit among us. Give yourselves fully and completely, as completely as you can. Hear the Spirit speak to you. May we close our time together by singing our hymn of invitation, Blessed be the tie that binds. Let us close in prayer. Loving God, as we leave this place today, we are empowered and we are challenged to go and make a difference in the world, to be your spirit, to be your truth, to be your words lived out in the world. Oh God, fill us up with your Holy Spirit this day and make us new. Make us go out and make this world a new and better place in which to live. In the name of our saving Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.